So you're not alone. Come join the Zoom on Saturday night. I'm super, super excited about that. Thanks for letting me ramble if you let this keep on playing because you do have a choice. <laughs> Hey everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 57 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Tuesday, March 31st, 2020. It's the last day of the month, and March was such a strange month. Um, so hopefully April brings some fresh things, if not the ability to get out of our homes. At least we have some knowledge like knowing what we're going up against and the new normal can kind of take place so um, let me know how you are adjusting and even though it's been a couple weeks um, I feel like I'm still adjusting so it's okay if you're constantly adapting to the new normal um, so Welcome to my little corner of my bedroom. If you missed last episode, I am recording in my bedroom for the foreseeable future because I am sharing my house um, now with my in-laws. So I am not gonna be recording in my yarn room anymore. Um, plus there's like stuff everywhere downstairs, so I really can't do that anyway. But if I were to record down in my yarn room, then everyone would have to be quiet on the second floor where our living room is in our guest bedroom and that just wouldn't be fair. So this is perfect. I made it my own with my lights and my letter board and some sheep. So yeah, this is where we are now. It's a chilly day here it, we had been getting really warm weather like 80 and 90 degrees and today I think it's like maybe 60 degrees but kind of on the colder side um, so that's kind of nice but I haven't put on any hand knits because I'm just hanging out of my house I literally have on workout leggings which is more than I have been doing because I've usually just been wearing sweatpants so I feel like this is a step in the direction of going outside. <laughs> and I have on one of my favorite McKinney Knittery t-shirts. I love how soft these are. But yeah, so that's kind of what I've been wearing. My uniform, t-shirts, and leggings or sweatpants, like just whatever I can. But I'm always changing my clothes in the morning instead of wearing pajamas just to feel like that I'm starting a new day. And that's been working for me. Um, so I don't have any finished objects this week. Um, since it's the last day of the month, I probably should have been working towards finishing something, but I ripped out my socks and all my other projects are pretty big. So they're not really like finish in a month type of project. So I'll probably have a lot more done at the end of April than I will right now because I have nothing finished right now. Um, but I will show you the progress that I've made because I feel like I've made pretty good progress on my three projects in the last week and I'm going to show you the design that I've been working on in case you haven't seen it over on Instagram. So let's start first with my my tried and true, my trusty TV knitting project. This is the Traveler's Loop by Dawn Barker and I have made a lot of progress since last week. Wow, I did not realize that. So that's my marker from last week. So I've done about twice as much. Um, in the last week, which is great. I really wanted to do more on this. I had a weekend goal to hit 30 garter ridges and I think I'm at 26 or 27, like somewhere in between there. So <clears throat> this takes quite a long time because I have tons and tons of stitches. Um, it uses up, I think, almost two full skeins of yarn. So that's a lot of knitting, but it's so worth it. I cannot wait to see this all the way done. I am almost to 30 garter ridges, which will be half way done. Um, and if you're participating in my little impromptu knit along, the Gila Cal, um, right there, Gila Cal, um, this is a great project for beginning helical, knit helical knitters. Um, so if you need some help with that, um, definitely go to my tutorial, which I'll try to remember to link for helical knitting. And then join our Ravelry group, um, Love and Stitches Ravelry group, because that's where the helical 
or Helical um, forum is. And Dawn, the designer of this pattern, has been very active over there helping people. And um, she's got lots of other patterns that work for helical knitting too, if you're looking for something a little more advanced. So I'm using, oh, I forgot my labels again. And I just remembered that I forgot my, um, my swatch things so I'm sorry I'm just the worst but I think that I think that we'll be okay we'll make it through um, but this is Ching fiber it's a single ply yarn in an unknown colorway and this is Malabrigo Machita and I'll put the colorway on the screen because I know it has something to do with like water but I can never remember what it's actually called so hopefully I'll make just as much progress the past two nights um, I have been watching movies with everybody. Um, so I think on Saturday, or no, Sunday night, we watched two like hour and a half movies. And then last night I watched like a two hour movie. And so that's when I've been working on this because it's just mindless knitting and purling. You don't have to look, you can just watch the screen until you get to the color change. And it is totally perfect for that. Okay, so next I have my beautiful brioche project. This is Golden Willow by Leslie Ann Robinson. And there's my little marker from last week. So lots of progress here. I have, I'm in the middle section of this shawl. So it's textural brioche and the middle sections, there's three repeats of this beautiful brioche. I don't know if you call it lace, but the increases and decreases. So I finished that middle section where you can see the purple, and I have just barely started on the last one where I have the pink coming forward and purple um, in the background. So that's a lot of fun. I'm gonna be working on this. Um, I don't know if I can get an entire section done before the next podcast, but that would be a really good goal because once I finish the middle section here, I'm actually going to be decreasing on the other side, doing something very similar to this. So once I get through that middle section, I know I'm going to be super motivated to finish this shawl, um, but it's been just so much fun to knit on. I definitely have to follow the pattern every single row, but it's kind of like becoming more rhythmic the brioche and I don't have to I can do other things like I can be a part of meetings um, and do those kind of rest rows where I'm just doing brioche and not doing increasing and decreasing so that's been really fun to kind of improve upon those skills and just really have the time right now to work on a project that's a little more complicated um, but if you do know how to brioche and you want to have a project that's like fun and interesting, I would definitely recommend this one. I think it's so much fun. There, you can really see all of it now. I'm trying to peek because I wanna see what it looks like from far away too. It's really cool. I'm super, super excited to see that last section come out and then just see it all together. And when I block it, I'm gonna be stretching it out a lot and giving it a lot of, um, like a little more width and a lot more length so it'll be just perfect to wrap up in um, but i'm using all single plies but all different dyers on this one um, this is hooker's corner and i think it's called lover's lane and you can see i am getting close to the end of that it should make it through um, the next section here i've been weighing my yarn i did not have a full skein to start with but it should make it through this next section i might have to change up the colors for the last section though and then this one is um dreaming color jelly and i think the colorway is lavender bloom and this one is malabrigo machita in renaissance there we go i'm actually learning these colors <laughs> I'll have them learn by the time I'm finished with the project. Um, but there's the back of it. Isn't that cool? Just looks so different. I love it. So pretty. But it is just turning out so nicely. It's, I think, going to be good um, for any time of the year. But I like that the colors are a little bit springy um, with the pink and the purple so that I can wear it right away. Um, I guess I'll have to start kind of dressing up more at home so I can wear my shawls. I should be doing that anyway. Now, my last project is a crochet project and I had just started it last week. And I had a goal on this one to 
work to my third color. You know when shawls start at the top, you can get through a lot more, like more rows than when it starts to get bigger. So it's at that point now where it's starting to get like really long in the rows, um, but I'm loving it. Um, so this is Blur by Deanne Ramsey. <laughs> She's Addy Day Designs. And I did a lot since last week. I had just started it. There's my little hot dog there. And that's so cute. I don't know if you can see him very well, but he's adorable. Um, and I have made it through to the third color. I know you probably can't tell, but because I've only done like a couple round or a couple rows. So I've got one color here and then it fades into this next color. And then you can almost just barely see how it's faded here. And I am doing a third color, very close, very similar. Um, but once I get more of it, I think you'll be able to see more of a distinction between these two. So it's a lot of fun. It's challenging me for sure. Um, I am doing these running stitch markers. That's what those pink little uh, things are. And I'm not 100% certain I'm doing them right. You can see where they zigzag a little bit. Um, and that is because the way that you alternate the colors, instead of just always going back and forth, um, you do end up doing um, two rows in the same direction, um, which kind of shifts everything one way. So I don't know if I'm doing this exactly right, but I count every time I go in between markers and I know that they're all consistent on either side and they keep increasing like they're supposed to. So I know that I'm at least getting them spaced out evenly. Um, whether I'm completely doing it or not, I am not 100% sure, but I keep checking to make sure that my shape is still changing like it is supposed to. So I really hope that I'm doing this right. I think that if I wasn't, I would get a different shape and I would be able to tell. So fingers crossed that it is going well. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to work on this again too. I haven't worked on it since Saturday because I was able to, no, was it Sunday? Maybe it was Sunday. <clears throat> I was able to meet my goal on Sunday, so I haven't worked on it since then and I am eager to get back to work on it. So hopefully I can kind of continue to alternate between all these projects because I really do love them all so much. Um, but it's fun getting to work to that next color. But those rows, like I said, they are getting very, very long. Oh, and here's something else I learned. Let me get my water. It seems like whenever I come up here, my throat gets like, it's harder for me to talk. I don't know why. Isn't that so weird? Because it's never like that any other time, just when I start talking up here. Um, what I did not know, and this is probably something that people who crochet a lot are like, duh, but when I first did the changing colors section here, I, the pattern did not say to replace the marker like it had in the previous sections. And so I didn't replace my marker. And then I got to a row where I was supposed to reposition the marker. And I'm like, well, my marker is not there because I haven't been carrying it up through the rows. And I realized that that was so totally on me because in knitting, when you place a marker, some patterns will tell you every row to slip the marker, but oftentimes they won't because it's just obvious that you're supposed to be keeping that marker in there until they tell you to remove it. Like it's on the needle. It's, I think it's more obvious because it's on the needle. And so it's like, oh yeah, I will just slip this every time I get to it and it stays right here. In crochet, it should be the same concept. Like you keep the marker in the same place until the pattern tells you to do something on either side of the marker, like increases here. And I just like, that's just new to me. That seems like something that's probably super obvious to most crocheters, but to me, because I don't crochet with markers and this is my first time doing that, I had to like learn that. So I had found out I made another mistake anyway, so I ended up ripping back to where I had last marked a stitch so that I could get back on the right track. But it's just, it's kind of fun just um, knowing that you're kind of new at something and learning new things. So like I said, I'm probably not doing this perfect. Like here's the zigzag here. Like you can see it when I'm changing colors, 
zigzag and then it comes back. So I think it's kind of all continuing in the correct path. It just gets moved when you do those color changing rows. But again, I don't know for sure. And as long as I get the shape that I need, I'm gonna be 100% okay with it. You won't even be able to tell once I'm done. So that's that one's bringing me a lot of joy. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Um, just to have another crochet project again, I had really missed it. Okay, I'm beginning to wonder if the problem with my like throat and hard to breathe is this chair because I'm sitting in a totally different chair than I normally am sitting in. Normally I'm sitting in one of those just like computer chairs that you can get from Target or Walmart that are like $20 and they're real simple. So I kind of like have to sit up straight. So I wonder if in this chair I'm like sitting back so far that I'm like crushing <laughs> my ability to breathe. So I'm gonna sit up straighter and see if that helps. <laughs> but I do have one more thing to show you and this is a design that I am currently working on. I have just finished my first prototype and it's taken me a long time to get here. I just, I don't really know why, um, but I don't have a name for this yet, but it's gonna be something like yarn sock or yarn cozy. So here it is. Um, it is this little guy. So I have a bunch of these yarn cozies from Buffy and Designs and they're made from a stretchy and elastic fabric um, not a jersey but like more like a sweaters material that has elastic like a sock kind of and so I thought wouldn't it be fun to recreate that with um, in knitting with your leftovers because so often I make a pair of socks and I might have 40 grams left over and I only really need like 20 in my scrappy blanket projects um, So I want to use that up and so this is a really great way to do that This prototype one because I can't say that they're all that the final version will be like that But it only took me 15 grams um, So I'm definitely going to suggest that you have 20 <laughs> just to make sure um, But I think that this is going to be pretty close to the final thing now. This is not a full skein that I've put in there. When I was making this, I was measuring it on a much fuller skein of yarn. Maybe I can take one of these out. So also, I know you can't see me right now, hold on. When I designed the float tote, which is a crochet pattern, I had these little buckets in there. Now these are so different from this because this is fingering weight and knitted and this is crochet and it's worsted weight held doubled. And these also have a ridge for if you have put a ball of yarn in there that's wound, hand wound into a ball, you can pull it through and it's not gonna, it just helps with a little bit with that ridge. So these are obviously quite different from this, but I kind of started here because People have asked me before if I have this as its own pattern. And that just might be coming someday, but I'm gonna make sure like it's a good pattern and it has um, lots of things in there that make it worthy of a paid pattern. So let me try this. This is a much fuller skein. I don't know if this is, this is so messy. Like I wind these myself and they're such a mess. Like who did this? <laughs> Hold on. Hold please. All right, this is a prime example of why it's great to have a yarn cozy or a yarn sock to hold everything in place. So this ball of yarn that I've put in there, when I was knitting on it, it was in a cozy. Um, so it stayed really, really nice, but it is not a full skein of yarn. You can see what's happened to it as I've pulled from the center, it's developed like a cone-like structure. Um, so the cozy still holds that, but let me see what it does when I have just like a fresh cake of yarn because that's what I think I need to work on adjusting is it's a little too, maybe too tall. Um, so let's see, let me get the little hole on the bottom centered up here. Okay, so here we go, there's the cozy. So different look, right, when it's actually a full on cake. So it totally encompasses it. And actually that might be perfect. That might just work because it's not like it's tight on there, which I want it to have a little bit of tightness because as your ball of yarn gets smaller, I want this to shrink. That's why we've got ribbing here. Um, and of course I haven't finished it off yet. I need to connect the I-cord bind off there. Um, but I think that just might work. That actually might be perfect. I was even able to fit a skein of worsted weight yarn into this cozy. It was a little tighter, but it still totally worked. And then I think when I block it, I can get this to lay 
just a little bit flatter. Um, although it doesn't really matter that much because it can still, like I've sat it down on a surface and it's totally fine. So actually this might be, this might be great. I always, if I have the time, cause I don't have any outside deadline on this, except that I know y'all want this pattern. Um, I have the time to actually like use this for a little while. I just finished it up yesterday. So now I can actually use it and myself see if there's anything that I would need to change. So let me put this back. I'm, I'm really happy. I should have tried that earlier, but I'm really happy that that is working. That's great. I'm so excited. Okay. So now I'm going to put this one, which is probably at, it's probably 60 grams. So not quite half, but let me just flip this little thing on it. So it looks a little different when it's, you know, on a cake getting used up, but it still serves the same purpose. So I'm actually just started a new one. <laughs> so you start at the bottom here where that hole is and make your increases. And then I'm about to work on like the body portion of this. So it's kind of funny because I've got yarn in here to make another one of these little yarn socks. So I think that's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited about that. I just cast this on this morning during a little, actually I cast this on during my um, video that came out today that I'll talk about later and worked on it for just a little bit then. So I'm eager to get another one worked up. I'm hoping to um, make this one look a little bit different so that there will be multiple options in the pattern so that instead of just getting like one basic pattern you get multiple like little designs in there i just think that with something that is relatively simple um that it makes it more worthy of a paid for pattern because i want you to get your money's worth um, but definitely know that this has taken lots of um, careful thought to make it a good and purposeful design. So pretty excited about that. How fun will it be for those of you who do knit with fingering weight or knit socks, like to have some of your favorite yarns, like re, like you can still use up a little bit of them and then you get to see them all the time as you're working other projects. I think that's like a really fun concept. I also cannot wait to use some self striping yarn. So after I do, this one, which is gonna have a bit of a pattern, I'm gonna try some self-striping yarn. So yeah, I'm actually feeling more excited about this by the minute. So definitely later today, um, you know, definitely I'm gonna work on all of my whips and this, no, that's not possible, that's not gonna happen, but hopefully I can get back to um, this for at least a little bit today and get to work on that. So if you are interested in test knitting that pattern for me, make sure you're following me on Instagram. Wait, I'm supposed to be sitting up straight and I'm trying to sit cross-legged. <sighs> make sure you're following me on Instagram because I will put the tester call out on there. I'm thinking it's going to be about two weeks before I do put out the tester call because I want to make, um, I want to give mis myself some time to try this cozy and then also to invent some more versions of it <laughs> so that I have a really good pattern before I send it out to testers. Testers are not gonna take a super long time. It's probably gonna be about three weeks from when I pick testers that the pattern will be out. So we are looking about at about a month to five weeks before the pattern is out, which probably sounds insane that it takes that long, but it really does to put out a quality product. So just hang tight and I will get that out as soon as possible. Okay, I think that's all like the actual knitting, but of course I've got questions to answer and news for you, so let's keep on going. Okay, I figured some of you might have this question about the Yarn Cozy, if there would be versions other than fingering weight. So let me get the fingering weight pattern out first, and then I do plan to do some more, some other versions, some sister and brother patterns. Um, probably something in another weight that's knitted and then also potentially a crocheted version. Um, so just give me some time. It takes a while to just get those in the works and I don't want to put something out that's just rushed. So I'm really going to take my time with it. So just be on the lookout. Again, follow me on Instagram. That's where you're going to find the most updated stuff. And I'll talk to you guys about it in podcasts as I update things. Okay, let's see. I think we can answer some questions. Now, I don't know what's going on with my computer, but I can't see 
to make to get back to other <gasps> no I don't know how to use my computer does anyone else feel like that I just minimized the internet and now I can't find like it doesn't show me on the bottom any open tabs this is how I feel like when I open a Mac I don't know how to use it okay I figured it out it is kind of like a Mac you have to like zoom out I don't know how my computer got into this state but I work on it every day and I know how to do lots of stuff on the computer but sometimes I don't know how to use the computer itself <laughs> anyway let's do some questions so these are on Ravelry from the Love and Stitches Ravelry group. So head over there if you have any questions for me. I saw three questions in there that I have not answered yet, and I'm going to answer all three of them today. So if you have more questions between now and the next podcast, um, put them in there so that I have something fun and interesting to talk about. Um, so this one is from Wood Regina 18 who is Regina. Hi, Regina. And she says, hi, Natalie. I hope you're hanging in there. You teachers are kicking butt. Oh, thank you. I think you guys at home that are homeschooling are kicking butt. <laughs> okay, her question. For Magic Loop, do you move the point that you divide the stitches or do you keep it in the same spot? For DPNs, the divides generally remain fixed, but for some reason, I always feel like I need to move them to avoid a line up the knitted item when doing Magic Loop. Thanks. Okay, that's a really great question. So personally, I don't move the point where I am dividing in Magic Loop. When I first cast something on, I divide it in half, and then I will generally keep those. So one side, like where you would change, change around your needles. Do I have anything in Magic Loop? I do, okay. Perfect. <laughs> so this is in Magic Loop if you're not familiar. It's just a way to knit small things in the round, but you use one long needle in order to do that. So this way I can keep working on needles that I'm comfortable with, like these five inch tips. I think they're five inches, instead of having to use something teeny tiny. <laughs> so half of your stitches will rest on the cord while you use your knitting needles to knit on the other half, knit, knit, knit. Okay, so there's a general explanation of magic loop. So one divide is always going to be my beginning of round. So that's where my tail is. So I always know where the beginning of round is. You don't need a marker if you are splitting magic loop this way. Then the other side is going to be my halfway point. Now, the times that I will change this is if I'm doing a pattern, like let's say like knit two, purl one. And when I get to the end of my first needle, I'm ending in something that breaks that pattern up. Like I'm ending in knit two or knit one and not knit two, purl one. So I will rearrange my stitches so that they're not perfectly in half, but instead align with my pattern. Same thing if I'm doing decreases throughout, I'll make it make sense. So that's one time where I'll change things in the middle of knitting them. Um, I've never changed it in order to not get a line. Um, so a lot of people say that they get ladders at the two points where their stitches are divided. So if you get ladders, I think that moving around the, the point where your stitches are dividing, like the needles are divided, is a really great way to kind of mix that up so that you don't have a straight line going down your pattern. Because Yes, one day eventually it will block out, but probably not in your first block. I think it takes blocking and wearing and using and blocking again before you will get rid of that line. I do believe it will go away, um, but if you want to kind of just avoid that entirely, maybe moving around your how you're arranging your stitches is a good strategy, strategy to do that. Just make sure you put in a marker where the beginning of round is so that you don't lose where you actually need to start and stop each round. Um, so no, I don't do that personally because um, like right now, it doesn't look like I'm getting ladders. Those are actually um, increases, but sometimes in socks, I do feel like I get ladders and it's really honestly not worth it because when I wear those socks, it's going to go away. Um, but if I had a really bad problem with ladders, I probably would try that strategy. So I think that's a good idea. If you are willing to do that, I would definitely give it a try. Okay, this next question is from Nora. Um, she says, hi Natalie, I wanted to ask you something. 
If I found a mistake in my pattern, it's already published on Ravelry, what can I do? Do I have to delete it and republish it? Or can I fix the mistakes without deleting it? Love your podcast. Okay, sitting up straight is not helping this throat thing. It happened last week. I was totally fine in between and then it's happening and happening again. So it must be something about talking. So weird. Um, anyway, so Nora is asking a question about um, when she's published patterns on Ravelry. So Nora has some designs. So if you go into the Ravelry group <laughs> and click on her name, you should be able to see her designs. So let me tell you that this is why Ravelry is amazing for both um, pattern sellers and pattern buyers. So listen carefully, even if you're not a pattern designer, because this is a great thing about getting your patterns on Ravelry. No other website that I know of has this feature. So Ravelry, when you purchase a pattern, that pattern is yours and you get it to your Ravelry like library and it goes to your email and you can download it on your computer. You know, you can have it in all these places, but you can also get updates. So when the designer finds that they want to maybe revamp the pattern or they found an error or they just want to contact everyone who's bought that pattern, the designer can do that on Ravelry. They can't do this on any other website that I'm aware of. Etsy, you can't do this because each transaction is individual. I can't just go on and say, everyone who's bought Louisiana Street on Etsy, let me send you a quick updated pattern. Can't do that. Ravelry, I can. So I've done this before. When I've updated patterns, it happens all the time. So Nora, don't worry, this is totally something that you can um, fix very easily. So you don't have to delete your pattern page. You don't have to technically delete your pattern, although you will be replacing the PDF. So anyone new who comes in and buys your pattern when you replace, replace it with the correct PDF um, will get the updated version of your pattern. And then anyone who's already purchased the pattern, there's a way that you can send them an update. So basically when you go to the um, pattern page, and I will try to pull it up here in a second, when you delete the old PDF and then upload the new one, it kind of prompts you like, send a message to previous, like people who own this pattern or people who have bought this pattern. And then you can just say, hey everybody, like I updated this pattern, I found an error in this section, it said this and now it says this, please download the new copy. And so if I'm somebody who's bought that pattern, and this is for all you pattern buyers out there, if you ever go into your Ravelry library and there's one of those little circular arrows and it says update available, update it and re-download it because it usually means that the pattern designer has well, it always means they've changed the pattern, but sometimes it means they've corrected mistakes or errors in the pattern, or they've just like revamped it for a better look, or maybe they've added something like, I have some collections of patterns and the Fall Means Football collection um, started out with just three patterns. And when I updated it, I sent out an update to people who had previously purchased it and they got a brand new pattern added to their collection. So make sure you check on those updates. But let me see. If you are a pattern designer, I'm going to go through this. If you're not, I'm going to go through it quickly so that you don't have to hear all of this. But you go to your pro tab and then you go to designs, I think. And then let's just say I wanted to edit my 40 yard dash pattern. Let me see if I can actually get to that. It's a little bit confusing. Do do do. Okay. So, let me show you guys, sorry. Ravelry can be a little confusing. Okay, so here I am on my designs tab. I'm gonna click the edit pencil next to one of my designs. And then at the top, it says edit in pattern store. So I'm gonna go to edit in pattern store and that's where you can update the PDF. So if I scroll down, um, I'm going to choose a new file, upload my new one, and after I've uploaded the new one, I'm gonna delete the old one. That's just in case like somebody just happens to be buying that pattern like at that minute that you're updating it. So maybe there's an off chance that they will get like two copies, like 
the old and the new version, but that's okay. At least you haven't left them with nothing. And because if you just delete your PDF, your um, pattern will temporarily be unavailable to purchase. Okay, and then at the bottom, you can actually see that I have sent, can you see it? I have sent an update on this pattern to buyers. So there's a little, little hyperlink right there where you can send an update out to your buyers and you can just type like the version, you can just type a little note to them and then it'll go straight to their Ravelry inbox and their email inbox. So there you go. If you, actually you have to check the notifications. I always like to check, send Ravelry messages, send email to their, to, wait, send emails to outside buyers. Yeah, I send it to their emails and to their Ravelry inbox so that they know that it has been updated. So you can totally do it without completely redoing anything. You just need to upload the new PDF. Okay, the last question is from Nature's Cozy. And I got creepy on this one because I thought I re recognized you from Instagram. So I went onto Instagram and I found out that you're, that I think your name is Allie. So extra creepy on that one. I love to know you, your names, guys. So if you ask me questions and your name is not on Ravelry, I might be super creepy and try to find it out. So I believe this is Allie asking, uh, she said, hey, Natalie, just wanted to pop in here and ask a non-knitting question. As a fellow Disney lover, I'm curious to know who is your favorite princess and what are your top Disney movies? Now, I did not think about this. I read the question, obviously, because I went and looked at your name, but I did not think about my favorite. So I think my favorite princess. So my husband is actually the biggest Disney lover, and he is the one who really made me fall in love with like Disney, going to Disney parks. Um, so we absolutely love, I miss going um, I went so many times last year. I know I'm like really, really spoiled to get to go so many times, but I really, really miss getting to go to the parks. It's so much fun. I have lots of good memories there. Um, so my favorite princess, oh, the only person that's truly a princess is Anna. So that's what my husband would say. Um, that's his favorite Disney princess. But out of the female leads from um, Disney movies. I would say probably maybe Ariel. I've always loved Ariel. Even when I was little, I liked Ariel. And I also really liked Cinderella. Um, so I don't know. I don't have really like, a, I'm not a princess person per se. Like I really like the Pixar movies. Those are my favorite. Um, but if I had to pick like a princess, I think it'd be Ariel or Cinderella. Um, just because they were coming out, I think around the time that I was born. So those are those are special movies to me. Um, and then as far as my favorite movies, I do really like Pixar. Um, I love the movie um, Inside Out because I love how accurate a lot of that stuff is, how the psychology things are portrayed for kids. I think it's so fascinating. So I love Inside Out. Uh, of course, I love Toy Story um, and what else do I really like? Um, I, I like, I think that there's gonna be some people who agree with me on this and some people who, are, who will say, what are you talking about? What movie is that? But I really like The Emperor's New Groove. Um, I think that's a great movie. It's on Netflix right now, I believe. So I actually haven't watched it recently. I need to go watch it. But Emperor's New Groove, Disney movie, you might not even have heard of it, but it's completely different for them but I totally love it. I think it's very, very funny. Um, but yeah, I think those are just some of my favorites. Honestly, there aren't many movies coming out that I don't like from Disney. Um, kind of like everything. So yeah, I'm a huge, huge fan. All right, incredibly, I figured out how to get back to the other tab on my computer so we can keep on rolling. Um, but now I'm just gonna go into some news and life updates. So this week I had a brand new video come out um, it was a day in the life. So I went to Instagram and asked you guys, would you rather see um, a video that I have recorded but just not ready yet on um, knitting massage? Like basically a way you can give yourself a massage with a lacrosse ball. So that video will likely be coming out next week since it's already recorded. I just need to put it together. Um, or would you like to see a day in the life? And lots of people said day in the life. It was close, but just by a little bit, day in the life was winning. So I decided to do that. So I spent Sunday and Monday kind of just recording clips throughout my day, 
what life looks like on a weekend and a weekday for me right now. And so that was a lot of fun to put together. It's pretty short, just 20 minutes of lots of different things going on. Um, and this morning I did a premiere, which just means that the video, when it posted at 9 a.m., I was there live and anyone who was watching between nine and the time that the video ended got to watch it at the same time and they got to chat in the box with each other and with me. It was a lot of fun. Um, so go check that out. I'll make sure to link it so that you can see it. The lights are getting really bright <laughs> right now. It's making it hard for me to see. Hopefully it's lighting everything up very nice for you guys though. Um, and then my other thing is that I am going to have a Zoom on Saturday. I believe six o'clock is the set time. I have debated with doing it a little bit earlier because when I do six o'clock, I know that leaves out um, like the UK and Europe because it's very late for you guys, like 12 and one in the morning. So I, I think that I'm just gonna have to do it, like I wanna do a knit night. Um, and for most of my viewers being here in the United States, that does make it nighttime for them. So I think I'm gonna do 6 p.m. this time. And then maybe in a couple of weeks, depending on how this Zoom goes, I can have another one where it's like a knit morning 10 a.m. and then that will include our friends that are in the UK and Europe. Um, either way, I am discluding, I'm trying to think of like the largest English speaking countries that I have viewers in. So um, definitely the UK and also Australia. So like if I'm good, if it's good for the UK, it's like bad for Australia. If it's good for Australia, it's bad for the UK, like time wise. So that's why I'm alternating, um, but yeah. Make sure to follow me on Instagram for all the details on that. I will also um, post something in the Ravelry group um, just so the details are like in one place. I think that's gonna be the best place to do it. But basically Zoom is just another way that we can get on and talk to each other live. Um, what makes it different than a YouTube live is that you guys can also get on and your screen is there if you want it, you can also talk if you want to. Um, I'm gonna make it structured um, because I think we're gonna have quite a few people, I'm not 100% sure, um, but I think we're gonna have, like, if we have the same number as we do on YouTube Lives, which is ranging from like 50 to 60 people, um, I'm gonna make sure that it is very structured for us so that everyone feels like they get to talk at least one time if they want to. Um, so that everyone feels comfortable. Um, I'm gonna kinda like ask you guys questions and let you come off mic and answer them and get to talk or ask me questions. So it should be a lot of fun, I'm excited. I might record it, so I will make sure all those details are on there. So like if you don't wanna be recorded, you can make sure your video is off and then you don't have to chat or do anything. It'll be a learning experience, but it'll be fun. If it ends up being really small, then I'll probably just, we'll just all come off mic. It'll be less structured and it can just be a little, you know, chat and knit. So either way is gonna be absolutely fine with me. I'm gonna be prepared for it and it'll be a lot of fun. So again, look for details. If I do have them by the time this posts on Thursday, I'll include them in the description box too. I don't want anyone to feel like they are not welcome to come. It is going to be open to whoever. I think that the limitations are 100 people, which I don't expect that to happen. But if for some crazy miracle it does, my goodness, by the next time, I'll make sure to find a platform where we can have that many people. So <laughs> there you go. Um, but yeah, it should be a lot of fun. And then I have one more thing. I wanted to show off a skein of yarn that I got actually a little while ago. Um, this is from Suburban Stitcher. And this colorway is Quinceanera. This was her colorway for DFW Fiber Fest, which was supposed to be this weekend. And of course it is canceled, which is, it's, I have a hard time because obviously it's very, very sad, but like, for me as somebody who is just going and buying and stuff, like the magnitude of it getting canceled is not the same as for someone who was selling and the coordinators and everyone who worked so hard on it. I feel just bad for them um, because this was the, their event and now it couldn't happen. And Suburban Stitcher was one of those vendors that I love to see every year and get her show colorway. So I 
this one is, it's almost like it was made for me, honestly. <laughs> um, but I think she said she dyed this one with herself in mind because she loves these colors and I just happen to love them too. Um, but you can still get this color, but only for a little bit. So the Fiberfest was supposed to be this weekend and she has pre-orders for this color on her site. So anyone who wants one can get one or multiple, I guess. She's got it in like all of her bases. This one is the sock base, which is 75% Merino, 25% nylon, my favorite. Um, but it's only open through Sunday because that's how long the festival would have been, DFW Fiberfest. So I'll have the link below. Make sure to go grab a scan of Quinceanera. This will be like the only time you can ever get it. So if you like it, go grab some. It's a great way to support. Um, like I would have gone and bought yarn from her anyway. So um, that would be a great way to support some people who are missing out on um, that income from not being able to have their show. So definitely head over there. Okay, let's talk about life. So I feel like I am sort of settling into this new life. Wait a second. I forgot to talk about Helical. <laughs> I just saw it and I was like, wait, I did not have that in my notes. So if you want to join in in a fun, casual knit along, um, Helical is a knit along for helical knitting. It's going to run till the end of April and there are some Yarny prizes. If you wanna see all the details, I'll link them below. You can go on my blog and also in the Love and Stitches Ravelry group. Excuse me. Um, this is my project for the Gila Cow, my traveler's loop. So anything that includes helical knitting for any part of the project, it can be a whip, it can be a new project. You do not have to finish it. It's just get out there, try helical knitting or incorporate it into your project to give it a try. And that is it. That's the helical. So sorry to stop talking mid-sentence. But anyway, life. I feel like I'm starting to get into sort of a routine. I've actually been doing better like getting up with my alarm during this period than I have with work. Um, so not too long ago, I had a day where I woke up late and missed being in the teacher's school pictures. And since that day, I have not hit the snooze button. I have kept my phone across the room. Now I actually have an alarm clock that's in my bathroom. So I have to get up and go to my bathroom and turn off the alarm and then I don't get back into bed. So I have been consistently not hitting the snooze button and it's changed my life, honestly, because I used to snooze for like 30 minutes every school morning probably, sometimes longer when I was late. <laughs> and then on the weekends, honestly, I would probably snooze for an hour to two hours. Like it was really, really bad. So I have gotten back, I've not only gotten more sleep because I don't have to set my alarm as early, but I've also gotten back wasted time in the morning. And it's, like I said, it's kind of changed my life. So I've been really good about still sticking to it. I set an alarm every single day. Um, during the week, it's earlier than it is on the weekend. And if I am, if I end up staying up late, like with my family hanging out, then I will set the alarm later for the next day. Like I don't try to just like, deprive myself of sleeping, but um, yeah, it's been really good. My body is getting used to it. Um, but other than just waking up, cause that's so hard to get yourself out of bed. Um, we've kind of been learning how to do this new routine with like in-laws here and another dog and staying at home and working at home. I mean, it's kind of a lot all at once, um, but we're blessed to get to have each other here at home. Um, so that's been really, really nice. Um, I've been learning something, or I've been learning lots of new things. I started um, started just a few days ago doing daily Spanish lessons on Duolingo, which is an app on, a free app on the phone. And I'm just trying to learn some more Spanish so that I can communicate better with my students at school. Um, also just living in Texas, like knowing some Spanish is not a bad thing. Um, you, <laughs> This is so bad, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but um, then you have, like, if people are speaking Spanish around me, like, at least, or around you, like, maybe you can at least know if they're talking about you or not. I feel like that happens to me, especially with my kids. Y'all are sneaky. Um, and then also just knowing Spanish, um, being able to communicate with your kids, like my, I call them kids, but my students, on that level, there's just, um, there's just an amount, like a level of rapport that is 
invaluable. And I feel like they really, um, they really respect that and they really like that if I can even try out a few Spanish words with them. So that's what I am doing. Um, and then I'm also learning how to use Canva. Canva is a website for, um, I don't, know, I, would, I don't know if I would say like photo editing, but basically like creating, using um, tools to like create images. And it, it's basically what I've been doing now with my thumbnails. You're gonna see a lot of different stuff going on as I try it out, so bear with me. Um, but trying out like new thumbnails, I've learned how to overlay like different fonts so I don't just have to use fonts from iMovie when I'm editing my video. I can put like a cute little um, like Instagram thing down in the bottom. So I'm excited with those new skills that I now have the time to like really dive into and learn. Um, and then I also have, oh, I just got like a uh, one of those excited, nervous fillings in my stomach. I have a new project that I am working on that will launch um, I'm planning for next weekend. Um, it's not knitting related, um, but I think that there's gonna be a lot of you out there that will really, really like it. Um, so stay tuned, follow, like I will be announcing it on my Knitty Natty Instagram, um, but I'm really excited. I've been hinting at it, I think for just a couple weeks, but it has been something that has been in the works for several months um, and it will be kind of rolling out slowly. So I'm very, I'm very, very excited and anxious to get it started. I wasn't gonna, could because it is like a whole nother thing that I'm taking on, I was gonna wait until the summertime um, to really start it so that I could just dedicate the summer to getting this new project launched and like back into my routine along with my Love and Stitches and Nitty Natty stuff. Um, but since I've been working from home, I decided that there was no time like the present. So I've moved up everything by a month and I'm excited to get that started next weekend. Um, so yeah, just stay on the lookout for that. I really think that a lot of you will like it. And then lastly, just bringing me joy, I have been, like I said, watching movies um, and knitting on my traveler's loop. And um, it's fun to get to watch movies during the week, I can't lie. Um, normally, I, with when I go to work from I leave my house at like 6.30 in the morning and I don't get home till almost five o'clock. Um, that's obviously a large chunk of the day. And now like I don't have commute time. I, my work, like I, there, those things, those transitions and other things that you have to do when you're in person moving kids like are cut out, like you can just work and get things done. I have a lot more time and then no, no social activities, I mean, for me, like as an introvert, it's kind of refreshing to just get to be home and really dive into all those things that I never usually get the time for. I know it's hard for a lot of people, but for me, it's been really, really good. Um, so one of those things is just getting to like watch movies on weeknights and have just two hours of dedicated TV time where normally I would be working on Love and Stitches business because that's the time of the day that I have it. So yeah, that's been a lot of fun. I've been getting more knitting done and I know that there have been people that said that they have less knitting time now. Um, especially if you have small kids at home, I can see that you have a lot more on your plate. I think we all have more on our plate um, right now and it's, it's difficult, um, but I think putting, for me, I, it's helped me by putting like structure and end times into my day. And part of that is work giving me that saying four o'clock is the time that you need to stop. So four o'clock I stop, I work on love and stitches, I do other things. Um, and then for me, eight o'clock is another stopping point. I make sure like I'm ready for the night in my pajamas, sitting on the couch and I am just relaxing with my family. So that's really helped me to like put boundaries in the day where that seems to have no bounds. Um, yeah, it's just, it's crazy. You kind of, it's hard. I know that's really, really hard and that it's not, it doesn't come natural. Um, so yeah, maybe if you are having, if you're overwhelmed and, and your day just feels like it goes on and there's no sense of time, maybe try putting some hard end times to certain points of your day and see if that helps you out a little bit because this is not the time to I think add any more anxiety to our lives. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm on a soapbox now that I need to get off of. 
<laughs> but if you want to go into my day in the life, you can see just how much I don't get done <laughs> in a day and how much knitting that I do and lots of relaxing and lots of taking breaks. I mean, there's just constantly times in my day where I need resets to just help me feel better about everything that is going on. So you're not alone. Come join the Zoom on Saturday night. I'm super, super excited about that. Thanks for letting me ramble if you let this keep on playing because you do have a choice. <laughs> anyway, I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.